Leviticus 2, but also Leviticus 7, 35. And this represents our tithes and our offerings. Okay, I want to throw out a reference to you. It's Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Malachi 3, 10. The Bible says, bring into the storehouse food in my house. Now, why in the Old Testament would food have to be brought to his house? There was nobody to eat it there. Oh, let me correct my statement. There were the priests, the Levites, those who served the Lord. And so this was a source of their food for them and their families, the heave and the wave offering. And the last one, here it comes, the drink offering. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 17, uh, Paul talks about being poured out. Uh, Romans chapter 12 um, uh, render yourselves uh, as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. The thing about a drink offering uh, mentioned in Leviticus 23 was this, that once you, once you pour a drink offering out on the altar, you can't recollect it. Um, a couple of times I've spilled things on the kitchen counter. I hope Len's not listening now. Um, but I tried to gather it back up and put it into a cup. Uh, do you think I had much luck with that? Yeah. All right. Once you pour something out, it's gone. And Philipp- or it's spent. Philippians 2, Romans chapter 12, a living sacrifice. Um, and we pour ourselves out as, a, as an offering to the Lord. Well, here comes a question. What happens when we don't do things right? I think this is probably as important as many of these other things. Back in the Old Testament, Nadab, uh, Nadab and Abihu watched how the, the sacrifices were taking place, and they tried to do the same thing, but it did not work. And God took them, uh, uh, those two. Uh, in the New Testament, Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, they came and gave an offering. They lied about it, and God took their lives. So when we take a look at the sacrifices and the offerings in the Old Testament, as well as what's in the New Testament, Jesus' sacrifice, folks, we have to be serious about what we're doing because certainly they're serious to the Lord. Okay, with all of those things said and done, you ready for this? Uh, I want you to think about one thing. And Luke asked me last week, uh, where is the Ark of the Covenant now? Last week I referenced Indiana Jones, which is uh, uh, one of my favorite actors, okay? Uh, Harrison Ford, I believe. And one, uh, was it his first movie? Um, uh, something about the Ark. Somebody help me with the title of it. Raiders. Raiders of the Lost Ark. And in that movie, they find the Ark. May I announce to you something? Indiana Jones, don't bother anymore because the Ark is no longer here. You reference Revelation 11, verse 19, and when John has the revelation of heaven in the temple, the ark is there. It's there, hard copy and all. And so there's no searching for it down here on earth anymore. God has it. Wait a minute. What did Jesus do after he died on the cross? He went to present his blood sacrificed for our sins in God's presence. The Bible says he's seated beside the Heavenly Father, and he's been there ever since. So the ark is no longer here. It's in heaven. You ready? Look at the rest of references. I'm going to give you some homework. Enjoy looking through the book of Hebrews. But Hebrews was written, we think, by Paul to Hebrews, to Jews. In Hebrews 1, he purged our sins and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Uh, Hebrews 2, uh, he died that we might not taste death. In uh, Hebrews 2, 14 through 18, he is now a merciful, merciful and faithful a high priest that now make, has made the sacrifice for us, and he doesn't have to make a sacrifice for himself anymore, uh, Hebrew, or any any time at all, because he was sinless and perfect. Hebrews three fourteen. We are now partakers of Christ. Hebrews chapter five. He became the author uh, of eternal salvation. Hebrews chapter seven. He is the surety of a better covenant. Better than the Old Testament. It's the New Testament. And he's able to save to the utmost. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8, 
verses 1 through 3, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for you and I, who are still sinners. We're saved, but we're still sinners. The payment has been made. Sin has been defeated. Satan has been defeated. But he's at the right hand of the Father, always making intercession for us. And finally, in Hebrews chapter well, not yeah, chapter 9, the first 16 verses... Christ came as high priest. He entered the most holy place. That's why the, uh, the uh, Ark of the Covenant is in heaven. He did it once for all. And so how much more will the blood of Christ cleanse us from our sins? Lastly, Hebrews chapter 9, 24, 25, and 26. Now to appear once at the end of the ages by the sacrifice of himself. So when we come to the very final analysis of the sacrifices and the offerings of the Old Testament, we see that when Christ came, he fulfilled it all. We don't make sacrifices like that in a worship service because Christ already gave his life. One of the magnificent things about the book of Hebrews is we read this, that the Old Testament priest had to go in first and make a sacrifice for themselves. Why? They were sinners. When Christ died, he did not die for his own sins. He had none. He died for ours. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that we have such a wonderful Savior? All right, ready? I trust that your faith is in him. Uh, Your faith needs not to be in anyone else but Christ Jesus himself. Um, Jesus did pay it all. All to him I owe. It's not as if you can make enough sacrifices to pay for Jesus' Jesus' forgiveness. That would never work. But we come to him as sinners. We lay our hands on him symbolically. Lord, these are our sins. We confess them. We repent of them. And we invite Christ, the Holy Spirit, God our Father, to dwell within us that we might be the Christians he wants us to be. If you haven't made that decision yet, if you haven't committed your life to Christ yet, today has to be the day to do it because Jesus paid it all. I'm going to invite you to bow your hearts and your heads with me. Thank you for letting me have such a good time with you out of the Scripture. I love this book. It makes so much sense when you keep studying it and reading it. If you've not made that commitment to Christ, do it today. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for my sins. Please come into my heart and forgive me and give me the power to repent from my sins and make me the kind of Christian you want me to be. You pray that and then share that decision with us, the church, other people. Jesus, you did pay it all. And our gratitude is only to you. We have come through, cover to cover, this your book. And with our brother Chriswell, we can absolutely acknowledge the fact that there is a scarlet thread that begins in the beginning and traces and is laced through and is woven into every page all the way to the very end. You paid it all, and to you all is owed. Now bless us in our commitment to you. In Jesus' name. We're going to close with that very hymn. It's number 305. Jesus paid it all. To close our service, will you stand with me and sing? And if you need to share some time with the pastor, you come. There it is. Okay, Mike. We can't hear it, Mike. Can you turn it up? Savior, say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. <clears throat> Lord, now, now indeed I find 
Thy power and thine alone can change the leopard spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Nothing good have I Whereby thy grace to claim <clears throat> I'll wash my garments white In the blood of Calvary's Lamb Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Isn't that great? All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Isn't that the best news you've ever heard? Ooh. And so, Lord, we close our service this morning. And I pray that we would walk out of here with a brand new appreciation for your sacrifice on the cross. That no longer do we need a priest that goes year after year after year and making a sacrifice for his own sins and then later ours. But you made the ultimate. And when you said it is finished, help us, Lord, to live that way. That your death on the cross has paid for our sins and we are new creatures in Christ. Bless us as we dismiss from this place and help us to be lights in this dark world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Good seeing everybody. Uh, thank Mike for all of his work.